Alright, so far we've done everything using equations. Now we're going to go backwards and actually write equations. And to, re to know how to do this, I want to remember how we would write the equation of the line if we had a slope and a point. So most of us would write out y equals mx plus b, I think, and plug in what we know. If this is x and this is y, and this is our slope being m, we would know negative 6, we would know our slope is negative 3, our x is 5, but since we don't know our b, our slope and our y-intercept, we would solve for it. So we add our 15 over. 15 minus 6 is 9. And so that if your b is 9, your equation is y equals negative 3x plus 9. So, um, we're going to do something very similar with this. To know if negative 254 is a point on the parabola, this is an x and this is a y. And so negative 2 can go in for x and y can go in for 54, and we can see if, in fact, it works out. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 minus 3 plus 4. So negative 2 minus 3 is a negative 5. Negative 5 squared, remember we have to do exponents before multiplication, so that's 25 times 2, which is 50, plus 4, and so we get 54, and so it checks out. Yes, it's on the parabola. Um, so, it's nice to remember our different forms that we used. Remember that we used standard form. And this is where we used our negative b over 2a to find the axis of symmetry. Or we use that to find the x-coordinate of our vertex. And then we plug it back in to find the vertex. Um, c was always the y-intercept, because when you plugged in x equals 0, it was left over. 0, 0, and that was left over. Vertex form. What was nice about that is the vertex was h comma k. And in intercept form, that was y intercept form. Sorry, not y intercept, x intercept form. Um, because the y equals 0. And so if y equals 0, x minus p, x minus q, either one of these had to equal 0 because a wouldn't be 0, so x minus p would equal 0, so x would equal p, and x minus q would equal 0, so x would equal q. So the other thing is a is always the same. It was always the multiplier. The vertical stretch. And so that's what we're going to use to figure out. And we're going to use each one of these because they come into play in different situations. So, write a quadratic function whose graph has a vertex of negative 2, 1 and a point negative 1, negative 1. So what I like to do first is I like to start with um, a picture. Negative 2, 1 and negative 1, negative 1. So we're starting at negative 2, 1 and so I know that's my vertex, and so I have this axis of symmetry. I could always have another point reflected over here. And so I know my parabola has to open down. So it's good to know that A has to be negative. But let's use, since we know our vertex, let's use our vertex form. Now I have f of x here, but really that's just like y, remember? And so y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So remember, this is our h and our k. Remember that the number with the x always did the opposite of what we thought, and k always did exactly what we thought. So what we're going to do is plug in what we know. x minus a negative 2. So that's really plus 2 squared plus 1. Now, I don't know A, 
but that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to plug in negative 1 for x and for y. Negative 1 equals our a, which I don't know, negative 1 plus 2 squared plus 1. So we have um, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, 1 squared. Actually, let's write out a couple. So this is a times 1 squared plus 1. So if we solve this, subtract 1, you get negative 2, 1a. So a equals negative 2. And so that is what goes in there to write your final equation, y equals negative 2, um, x plus 2, squared plus 1. What's nice is that you can check this by typing in negative 2, x plus 2, squared plus 1. And I'm going to go to my table. And first off, negative 1, negative 1 is in there as a point. And also the biggest point that we get is negative 2, 1, and so that must be our vertex. That's our maximum. Um, so there you have it. First form, done. Write a quadratic function with x-intercepts, negative 1, 4. What that tells me is I'm going to know that when y is 0, and so we're going to use intercept form for this one. It's good. much easier. So imagine having pulled this out. This would be x plus 1 and x minus 4, right? Because minus a negative 1 and x minus 4. Now that there's this a out front, You're going to have to know these forms. And so there's this a out front. We don't know the multiplier, but that's what comes into play with this one. So y equals, um, and actually let's plug in the 4. We know y is 4 and x is 2. So 4 equals some a and x is 2. So 2 plus 1, 2 minus 4. a times 3 times a negative 2. And so we get 4 equals negative 6a. So divide by negative 6, and you get a has to equal negative 2 thirds. And so y equals negative 2 thirds, x plus 1, x minus 4. Again, visually, it's got to go through negative 1. It's got to go through 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's got to go through 2, comma 1, 2, 3, 4. And so you know it's got to open upside down. And so getting an a value of negative 2 thirds is okay. Remember, you can double check by typing it in and noticing that if your point is on the table. You can also try 2, 4 in here just to make sure that it works if you don't have a calculator. This next one, write a quadratic function in standard form um, for the parabola that passes through these three points. Okay, so here's the trick. None of these, or maybe one of them, we don't know, are the vertex. But remember standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, what are a, b, and c? Well, we don't know. A determines whether it goes up or down. C determines the y-intercept. And so if you're given the y-intercept, you know what C is. So if you knew that x equals 0, you knew you would know what C is. But we don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to make three of these equations. One for negative 230, one for 1, 6, and one for 4, 36. We're going to make three equations based on that. So I'm going to plug in 30 equals a times negative 2 squared plus b times negative 2 plus c. 6 is the y, 
equals a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. And 36 equals a times 4 squared plus b times 4 plus c. So what we have are an a, b, and a c. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to flip-flop this around so that we have a system of three equations. So I'm going to write negative 2 squared is 4a plus, and I'm going to write minus 2b plus c equals 30. I'm writing equals 30 because this is what, how we're used to seeing it. So 1a plus 1b plus c, and you don't need to include the ones, but I did. And 4 squared is 16a plus 4b plus c is 36. Now, so you have a three unknowns, three equations. And how we would do this last chapter is set up a, syst uh, a matrix. 4, 1, 16, negative 2, 1, 4, 1, 1, 1. And if you multiply that by a matrix X, or A, B, C in this case, usually we were doing X, Y, Z, and that would be equal to 36 and 36. So this is some matrix A times some matrix X equals some matrix B. So we said if we multiply by the inverse of the matrix, we'll get this to cancel out, and we'll get X to be just that. So let's make this matrix A and this matrix B, and we'll solve for A, B, and C. So hit the matrix. Second and the matrix button right here. Let's edit our matrix A, which is 3 by 3, 4, negative 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 16, 4, and 1. If you hit enter, it automatically scrolls over. And next matrix, I'm going to make it matrix B, a 3 by 1, and that's going to be our 30, our 6, and our 36. And so now you go back into matrix. So I was using the edit menus to change those. Um, and if you need to slow down, take a breather, sorry, if you need to see how I'm doing that, check out the, the matrix videos, because I do it much slower, more slowly, whichever is the proper English way of saying that. Okay, so inverse of A, the inverse button again is the matrix button X to the negative 1. And so X equals 3, negative 5, and 8. So what that is is A, B, and C. So we have our final equation is Y equals 3 as our A, X squared, plus, or you could say minus 5, plus 8. And so, just to double check, 3X squared minus 5X plus 8. Double check that your your all your equations are in there. Negative two thirty. One comma six. And four thirty-six. And so that's how you know that all three of those equations are in there. So that's how you write quadratic functions, taking advantage of the different forms depending on what you're given. If you're given the vertex, if you're given the intercepts, y intercepts. Or if you're only given three points, you're going to have to go to standard form and solve the system with the ABC.